In this video, we'll be completing another multi-step calorimetry problem. How much heat must be absorbed by a 35 gram sample of solid mercury to change its temperature from minus 39 degrees C to room temperature 20 degrees C? So draw your heating and cooling curve. We'll label it mercury. We're dealing with mercury. So let's look up mercury on the chart. Mercury, it has a melting point of negative 39, so let's add that. And a boiling point of 357. Okay, let's read a, uh, our problem again carefully. How much heat is absorbed? So right away, absorbed, we know that heat is going in. If heat is going in, that means it's going to be an endothermic reaction, and ultimately, our answer should have a positive value. How much heat is absorbed? by a 35 gram sample of solid mercury to change its temperature from minus 39 to 20. So we're starting off as a solid and we're at 39 degrees C. So we're on this plateau but because we're a solid we're going to be at this end of the plateau. So it's starting as a solid at minus 39 degrees C and it's warming up so that means it has to melt and then once it's completely melted then we'll increase its temperature up to 20 degrees C which is somewhere around here so you can see that this is going to involve two steps plateau and slope so we're going to need two equations so starting off on the plateau that's the heat of fusion and then we need the specific heat capacity for mercury as a liquid. So here's the specific heat capacity for liquid. And mercury's value is 0 0.014. So we start on a plateau. What the heck? How did I screw that up? In this video, we'll be completing another multi-step calorimetry problem. How much heat must be absorbed by a 35 gram sample of solid mercury to change its temperature from minus 39 degrees C to room temperature 20 degrees C? So start with your heating and cooling curve and let's locate mercury on the chart. Now the melting point is negative 39. Add that to your graph. And the boiling point is 357. Add that to your graph as well. Now let's read the question one more time carefully. How much heat must be absorbed? Absorbed means the energy is going in. That will be endothermic. So that means ultimately our answer is going to be positive. So how much heat must be absorbed by a 35 gram sample of solid mercury to change its temperature from minus 39 to 20. So looks like we're starting off at minus 39. So that's here on this plateau. So we're somewhere along here. But because it's a solid piece of mercury, that means we're going to be starting right here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take that solid mercury and add heat energy until it melts. So here it's a solid. We add heat energy and here it melts. It's at 39 degrees C the entire time. Then once it's melted, we're going to add more heat until we get up to 20 degrees, which is about right here. So you can see this is going to involve two steps. 
and two different equations, the plateau and the slope. So this is the, is the fusion plateau, so we're going to need the heat of fusion, which is 11.6 for mercury. And this is mercury as a liquid, so we're going to need the specific heat capacity for mercury as a liquid. So let's start at the plateau. Q equals mhf. They give us the mass, it's 35 grams, and the heat of fusion is in our chart. It's 11.6 joules per gram. Now we're at the slope, the second step. When you're on a slope, you have to use Q equals mc delta d. Once again, the mass is 35. The specific heat capacity is given to us. Here in the chart, it's 0.14, and it's final temperature minus initial temperature. Notice this number is precise to the tens place. This is also precise to the tens place. This is how much heat is absorbed during the first part, during the second part. So we add them up to see how much heat is absorbed during the whole experiment. And we can only be precise to the tens place. So our answer to the correct number of sig figs is this.